Well, how do there, chums? Does I, Captain of Steve's, and today, chums, I want to talk about No Man's Sky. Now, Sean of the Murray said at the awards show that No Man's Sky is going to be a very big year for that game. So, they also said that, though, for 2023. In 2023, they did introduce a whole new race. So, when you think of it that way, it probably was a large year for No Man's Sky. Or at least it is for setting up a narrative and maybe a foundation for something to grow upon. Yeah, adding in a new race was no short feat. So anyway, let's jump on over and let's take a look at what you guys think would make No Man's Sky a big year when it comes to updates inside of the verse. So how do I know this? I put out a poll and I asked people on said poll, what would you like to see in No Man's Sky in 2024 to make it a big update year, people? Yes, my voice sounds a little bit different. I am nursing man flu. I might have to pause this a few times and go blow my nose and cough my lung up and all sorts of other stuff. It's lovely. Anyways, I put in a couple of options here. These are sort of like little mini catch nets for people that didn't probably want to chime in. There's been 364 votes and there has been 39 comments. So roughly what a 10% differential between the two, which is pretty good going. So thank you very much for everybody that voted and thank you very much for everybody that's cast uh, a comment into the comments area. So a lot of people have hit up the top option which is to come back and play some more, whether that's by raids, guilds, rare loot, etc. And for next up was more variety to fauna, flora and variations to planets and deeper oceans. 32% hit that up. I mean, first and foremost, No Man's Sky is an adventure game and I would probably sit in this camp myself. But at the same time, I would also like to see uh, reasons to come back, pick up and play, and to play with friends. But I think for this to work, it needs to work well with having multiplayer fixed. So there is that too. Okay, well anyway, let's uh, scroll on down and let's see what people sounded up in the comments. Some people just uh, chimed in on the, po on the poll results, but here we go. We're going to be reading some of these now, people inside the viewer. So we've got Crown Mountain Games. Oh, sorry, Crow. Crow. Crow Mountain Games. I think it would be a huge improvement in variation if they would make the terrain more crazy crazier and interesting like at launch heck yes where we had all those sort of like wormy wormy planets and stuff yes totally agree with you on that one my friend yeah uh, bring back some of the craziness and terrain I think the reason they mo removed some of the craziness and terrain is mainly for the base building and also the exocrafts for traversing the landscape having things jutting out all over the place made that a little bit difficult so I think they tamed it down for those reasons but it would be nice to see them put back in again I mean who uses their exocrafts anyway it's very rare I get mine out of the garage Barking Worm! Hello there, Barking Worm! This says, Raids in the form of asteroids would be nice. Imagine like a derelict, only it's an asteroid with rare loot filled with biological horrors. Would love to see biological horrors get attention in one of those updates. Maybe even different types of biological horrors. Barking Worm, I think you're onto something there. I think you're definitely barking up the right tree, my friend. Yes. So we do see these little horrors that hatch from eggs. So we, we get to see quite an early form of these biological horrors. We also see the worms and the worm babbies, but they're obviously not related, or at least I don't think they are. And a lot of worms in life are just pupas for something else. They usually turn into some sort of winged beasties. So yeah, I would quite have liked to see the worms get a bit of love and the biological horrors just like yourself there. Nice to be able to see a queen horror, you know what I mean? Now, something's laying those freaking eggs and it's not those little critters you know the, the, the eggs are like half the size of their bodies they're obviously little drones where's the freaking thing that laid those eggs yes i'm with you on that one barking worm yes pookie hello there pookie pookie's quite regular guilds where we can own parts of space would be fantastic or actual regions to reward to travel to the center of the galaxy yes like maybe if you travel to the center of the galaxies and loop back to Euclid, you unlock a special skin for the multi-tool or shit. Yes, that would be lovely, wouldn't it, Pookie? Now, in fact, I think just going through each different sort of uh, universe, I know there's like, what, 250 of them, but it'd be nice if there was 250 maybe different skins or decals or something, just anything. It's a jaunt. It's a, it's a task and a half to get through each of the galaxies, so a reward for each one that you do. You know, they've put them all in there, so add a reward for each. Make it worthwhile for people, because I've got, what, to Galaxy 10? You know, 
eyes and tam and by that time i think well i've i've seen pretty much everything that's going to because after that it's just rinse and repeat they just they just cycle the same algorithms for each of the galaxies you're not going to see much else outside of the first like 10 to 12 galaxies you go to it it just feels empty and pointless i kind of feel that they should reduce the galaxy count to something like 16. i did a whole video on reducing the galaxy count and making them related to the actual glyphs so you know like we've got like a diplo glyph for example so maybe Maybe there's a Diplo galaxy and when you go there there's a good chance you're going to encounter that lovely majestic E3 Diplo and there's more Diplos being spawned inside of the universe not just Diplos but dinosaur like creatures like stegosaurs and triceratops and stuff like that you know so more of a prehistoric time if you like you know and, and, and I don't, I've done loads of others anyway I'll hit that up up there go hit that up if that sounds juicy to you because there's all sorts you know there's glyphs for everything like the beetle one and stuff like that anyway yeah going up on tangent TJMB. Hello there. NPC overhaul with AI personalities and speech synthesis. Along with that, an expanded story engine that follows for rich inter inter interactions, side quests, backstories, and etc. Yes, uh, TJMB. I've seen quite a lot of mods out there for a lot of other games. And you can go over and talk to NPCs and actually talk into your mic, and they give you some sort of response. It's freaking crazy stuff. I've seen it in Skyrim. There's a guy that does VR interactions in Skyrim with NPCs that actually have AI personalities. It's freaking awesome. It's so funny as well. Some of the interactions he has with them are just hilarious. Um, I, 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 that would be awesome. I hope, I'm hoping that's going to be in Light No Fire, to be honest, my friend. Anyway, here we go. Neptune Shark, 1980. Oh, you could be a year younger than I. I'm 1979. More complex missions with several steps, combined with new rewards, construction items. I'd also like to see new ways to use your freighter and fleet. Hmm. Yeah. In fact, I've done I've done videos on more complex missions and also freighter and fleet overhauls and things like that. I just wish there was a way to upgrade our class of our freighters right now, people. You know, our frigate fleet, they upgrade when you send them on missions. I'd like to see more RPG elements added into freighter mechanics and becoming like, we can get a nice class freighter, because at the moment, it's just save scumming and reloading and reloading until you get an S class. That's not fun gameplay. Anyway, yeah, I agree. Heck yes, definitely. Okay, hyper banana, hyper banana. I want them to do very special, uh, a very specialised variety update. What I mean by that is, say the first update will focus solely on ice planets, special ice fauna, terrain generation, etc., and then they move to say dead planets, etc. Hyper Banana, I've always thought it's a strange old world when you land on the freaking ice tundra, yet you go in a cave and it's pretty much as dry as any other cave that you see inside the game. I want to see ice caves full of ice crystals, and when you go to the oceans, I like to see ice sheets and ice bergs and stuff like that to make it more believable. Because at the moment, it, it just feels like, oh, this is the same as another planet, just with different skins on it. So I totally get what you're saying there, my friend. Totally 100% get what you're saying. It's like all the swamp planets. I'd like to see proper willow-type trees, and I'd like to see lily pads in, in the water, and make them shallower and make them more swampy. You know, yeah, I, I think you're on to something there. I think every single biome, if they are going to stick with biomes, Give each biome a little bit more love and make them really feel like they've popped and they're actually more believable, livable, tangible, organic places. Yeah, 100% agree, my friend. Okay, so we've got Tintan. Hello there, Tintan. I always wanted multi crew ships in the form of freighters. Yes. Well, we have got our freighters and you can invite your friends aboard. Does take a lifetime for your freaking base to render, though. Yeah, that, that that's a fun one. Waiting for your actual base to render in for your mates to see it. It would be nice if they just added interactable consoles for each of your mates to take up a crew position. But yeah, that that could be a nice idea. I used to play a game called Bridge, Bridge Commando or something like that. It was a Star Trek. One. It was actually really good, and that was on VR. That was great fun. I think I've got a playlist on it on my channel, in fact. Ellis Mead! Hi, Captain. Hope you feel better soon. I still feel like complete cack, my friend, but thank you. Happy New Year to you and your family. I chose the fauna and flora option. This option has been long, long over-attention overhaul, especially the oceans. 
Also, deeper oceans with oceanic fauna overhaul and expansion along with a wider range of aquatic plants, corals, etc. Obviously, there's still mystery with megafauna. But surely we could do something the size of a seal or a dolphin. Yeah, ship customization along with painting, similar to the video you did last year, I think. And game polish, bug fixes, no big fixes, are general improvements, as you said. P.S. Making a video takes a lot of your time, but maybe you consider a video about freighter customization. Either like we want with ships or a modular way. The modular way is hinted at in game. Okay. Well, Ellis, there's quite a lot to tackle there. I just need to cough though, so I'll be right back. So, Ellis, uh, I already see creatures the size of dolphins and seals inside of oceans. They're a rarity, but you usually find them. What I would say is our ocean has more alien-like looking creatures in than what we see inside of No Man's Sky. All the creatures inside of the oceans in No Man's Sky are very fish-like. Yes, yeah, so you get the odd squid. But in our oceans, we've got these weird freaking colourful slugs, we've got snails, we've got crabs, we've got, we've got all sorts in our oceans. Inside the oceans of No Man's Sky, it's rather limited. For an alien looking game, there's not many alien looking creatures inside of our oceans inside of that game. I would like to see vast more variety when it comes to alienish type looking fauna. And I would like to see something the size of some of the creatures that we see perhaps in Subnautica appearing inside of those oceans. And I want that feeling of trepidation. The fear of the sea is something that I have in real life. You know, if I haven't got myself some goggles or a snorkel or something so I can't see under the water, if I can't go under the water and open my eyes and I'm in deep ocean, I am scared shitless that it might be a shark circling me. I don't know about you, but I don't like that. You know, if I, but if I've got goggles on, at least I can see around, I feel a lot more safe. You know what I'm saying? I want to feel that same sort of fear inside of No Man's Sky. Just don't right now, people. And when it comes to freighter customization, I've already done a video on freighter base building, but I don't think that's what you mean here. I think you mean making them more modular, so you could swap out round containers for maybe the square ones, change the turrets, add more turrets, or maybe mess about with the freighter and modularize it and build your own freighter. Yeah, that could be quite cool, that could be quite nice, but how long is it going to hold your interest for? You know, at the moment we can we can do all sorts of our freighters other than that. You know, you can change the colour and all that sort of shenanigans and you can build a base in it. Yeah, it it could be it could be cool, but you know yeah, yeah, it, it's a nice it's a nice idea, it's an addition, but I don't know how long that would keep me occupied for myself. But yeah, I don't imagine well, if you're asking for it, it's something you definitely want. So there we are. Okay, so we've got Dylan Nahal. The ability to switch to combat mode on foot. Hmm. Your standard L2 to aim and R2 to fire, circle to crouch, it would make it dealing with sentinels a lot more pleasant opposed to frustrating. I can imagine players then creating maps on planets to have friendly death matches. It would be like the No Man's Sky version of Paintball. Yeah, we used to do death matches on my actual channel, and uh, Cobra used to have his own Thunderdome back in the day, and people used to turn up and shoot each other to death. I mean, you used to just add in cubes and stuff that you could hide behind and stuff like that, duck and cover and things. But yeah, there's not really much dodging or anything inside of No Man's Sky. The combat mechanic is very sort of limited. It's like they do give you a shield. I, had to, I don't think I've seen anybody ever really pop a shield and use it in actual gameplay when they're taking on the Sentinels. And I watch a lot of content creators. I know that I very rarely use the shield. I tried it once, but it just seems a little bit too finicky to do all the time because you can be being shot at from multiple directions, you know? It's not like there's a dodge button or anything. Combat inside of No Man's Sky just really does need a little bit of a lift. And I don't mean by just adding in more weapons, but that still would be nice. It'd be nice to see the incinerator added in. But yeah, I kind of see where you're coming from. The only trouble is with a lot of that is now that they've got the VR mode in there, entering into a combat mode could be a little bit jarring for a VR player. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know how they would approach that in VR. That's my only concern, but this is a good idea. Okay, Red Path Song. Would love more missions like Hunt for Sentinel, Sentinel Prime, Search for Homeworld, Ship Optimization, be able to add more slots to the exocrafts. Yes, all those sort of things would be quite lovely. The only trouble what I'd say with adding extra slots to exocrafts is now that we can add extra slots to ships, and all ships can have the same amount of storage capacity. Back in the day, most people, if they wanted to build a base, they would have a hauler, and that would be what they call in to build their base. They had actual 
reasons to have different ships inside of their ship range. If all exocrafts had the same level of capacity, I don't think anybody would use that massive, great, big, giant caravan of a freaking exocraft for anything. Um, they'd just be going around in the smallest one with a shed load of storage capacity. So I don't know about that. Um, I think if they were to do it, there'd have to be a max limit for each one. But obviously the giant one would have a bigger max limit. And I don't know why they didn't do that with haulers. You know, if they are going to make every single ship the same in storage capacity, they needed to make the hauler have a separate capacity. Or what's the point in calling it a hauler if it only hauls the same as other ships? Yeah, ship perks and ship missions it's like if you have got a hauler it'd be nice if you could pick up missions that are specifically for a hauler like hauling stuff from a to b things like that and if you've got an explorer maybe have a bit of tech in there lets you scan all the planets inside a system like we can from our actual freighter now you know that sort of stuff ship missions and ship perks and that kind of fits into your ship optimization i, I like to hope to think but yeah I, I think that they need to rework missions and make them more ship related but as for your slots to exocraft i agree but i think they should still be um staggered steps so maybe the nomad you could add in maybe an extra a nomad you can add in maybe an extra five slots or something the uh, the exo mech maybe you can add in three you know and maybe that giant caravan one you can add in an extra 12 or something you know that that will make more sense i think it still needs to be staggered but there we are okay we've got Romanian, Romain Gurig, I can't pronounce your name. It's you! You know who you are. I'm feeling a little bit disappointed with the expeditions. They're really fun to come back from time to time as a little reboot, but the co cooperativity side is really meh. It's been said that the expeditions were meant to be done with friends, but it's not like a party. Even if you make one, you can't share your hard work and milestones. You do this one, I'll do another one. They're user linked for me. It's the main issue. It would be so much fun to embark on an expedition journey with friends in a private party and do all the minor stones together. 100% agree. Yeah. yeah, even when you boot into a freaking expedition, it turns multiplayer on and PvP and everything else automatically. But yeah, if you go and link up with a friend, you can't. You can't share milestones. That's a bloody good point. Yeah, that, that really does take... Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's that's freaking awesome idea yeah but there we are uh, there's, there's a lot of things like that just like the uh, quicksilver missions like build an outpost or whatever that does that really just doesn't work well at the moment they should say something like construct a base that's got so many parts and um you know, and then you all work towards making that base and you, you build that so many parts together in tandem. The only worry with that is people are just going to throw down bits really fast, aren't they, to complete the mission. It's just not a fun thing. You know, they need to rework a lot of the missions. Make multiplayer missions, definitely. Wargiver. I have a list of changes I hope for. Derelict freighters. Expand or the system added to. Be nice if there were sentinel bases to raid. Turn ships into display pieces for freighter bases. Kind of like some derelict freighters have internal bays where we can raid. Buff food, as it stands, food is basically just to recharge the suit. It has no actual benefits. Maybe more ship slots, new ship classes, call for more slots. Okay, well, the ship slot stuff, we've already touched on all that sort of stuff. Ship classes and perks and missions, covered all that sort of stuff up. But yeah, food, they really could do with adding to food. I was thinking maybe, you know, using it to actually sell inside of your own personal shop and stuff. You know, that that's the sort of thing that you can't buy. Not a lot of people like to do sort of trading commodities or, or, or actually do the cooking part, but they're out for trade, is what I was supposed to say. So if you did have your own little cook shop, maybe you could sell eggs for like creatures that you've got as pets that have laid the eggs. But not only that, you could sell some tarts and some cakes and other stuff that you've made. But you're right, then what would people do with them? I mean, you can take them to Kronos and spin them into nanites. The only thing is, taking them to Kronos to spin into nanites is painfully slow. They need to speed that up. But it would be quite cool if players could be given their own shops where they could sell their pet eggs because the amount of times I get messaged by people, are you still giving away the bird eggs? Are you still giving away the eggs from the expedition pets? 
If I had a shop that people could go to, it would stop all those messages dead. And also, I could put a load of cakes in there, pastries, things like that, that people can then buy and go in exchange for nanites. So it's a good way of changing unites to nanites, you know? So yeah, I kind of agree with you there. They, they could work out something, but they need, to, they need to improve Cronus for that to work, and they need to be able to give us some shops to sell some of our limited edition stuffage. Yeah, that'd be pretty darn freaking lovely. Um, derelict freighters. I've always wondered why on derelict freighters, when you get to the last room, it's double room height. I've always thought it would be nice if they added a boss into that last room on a derelict freighter. You know, if you've gone through a derelict freighter and it's got all the sort of postules in there and the pulsating things and they pop and you get all those little guys running around, it'd be nice if in the end you get to see the creature that laid all those freaking eggs, like a big queen alien. Or if you've gone on one that's got all the little sentinel drone type things flying around, you get to the actual end room and it's got a giant servitor droid in there. That'd make a lot more sense, heck yes. A little boss fight at the end. And I've always thought the Sentinel Pillars, you know, I done a mock-up of what I would like to see in games some time ago, I put it on Reddit, and I actually put in, it'd be nice to have a Sentinel sort of base or stronghold that you have to raid to shut down the Sentinel activity. Not long after that, Sentinel Pillars were introduced that did exactly that, but I was thinking more of the derelict freighter sort of thing, where it actually random generated you a base that you had to go in, take out a load of Sentinels, maybe take out a Sentinel boss in there, and then shut down the Sentinel activity, in that sort of stance. But then, looking at how quickly I got bored of derelict freighter bases, and running derelict freighters, and that just would be arduous and a pain in the freaking backside. Um, so yeah, uh, I agree with a lot of those things. I think you've got some lovely ideas there. Heck yes. I do like the idea of having ships as uh, freighter based parts. Maybe they could let you add ships to your Wonders catalogue and then at least you could have them in your Wonders projector. You know, your favourite ship is Wonders. That could work maybe and have them in Wonder projectors in that sort of sense. Anyway, let's scroll on down here. We've got GRZ Gregors. Uh, yeah, you know who you are. I don't know how people make these names. Is that just a random generalization thing? If that is your actual birth name, holy fudge, that's, that's almost every letter in Scrabble. Okay, here we go. Finishing game loops would be nice. Heck yes. There is so much food types, but not much use for it. Hold on. 10 hours ago, two hours ago, you guys are freaking in tandem. Yeah. Totally, we've touched on that. You can have so much money, but there's nothing to spend it on. More attractive money sinks, like cosmetics, banners, etc. More survival aspects, hunger, thirst, fatigue, and sleep. Oh my god. Super extreme planets would, yeah, would kill you during a storm almost instantly with max weather protection when not inside a cave, base, or ship. More polished factions and guilds. Mm, okay. And positive and negative standing and consequences. This one. 100% agree with. Yeah. Because at the moment, you know, we, we get our faction alignment up. It does nothing. It doesn't even give us a bloody discount. So, yeah, totally agree with that one. Now, everything else that you've suggested here, pretty much, yeah, all of this sort of stuffage, uh, we already have permadeath mode. And the survival mode is just like a tamer version of permadeath mode. I think survival mode should be a standalone mode that adds in all these sort of aspects. Maybe with a few toggles, but we already have custom game mode anyway. A few more toggles inside of game mode selection to allow you to actually have the thirst and hunger and fatigue and sleep, if that's what you want in there, could be added in. And maybe even ship um, repairs and stuff like that. I mean, we've got repair kits, but it's very rare stuff gets damaged inside of the ship. So maybe survival mode could add in those elements that you've mentioned there. I'd never touch it, it's not for me, but at least it would be an option for people that do like it, like you. So yeah, yeah that would be quite cool. Nice. Lord Darth Nintendo. <laughs> nice. I think in general, new mechanics would do well. The game is starting to get repetitive. It's the same methods, same techniques, and always the same stuff to do to get the same results. I think if we get new ship mechanics, and not only new designs, new building mechanics, and overhaul, and overall overhaul, I think we get back to the game. It also seems a good time to bring ship customization. 
Starfield wasn't what people expected and thought and would be better than No Man's Sky. One thing that Hello Games needs to do to convince people that No Man's Sky is better is expanding upon the ship mechanics. It's one thing that people want from Starfield and No Man's Sky ship customization. It seems a perfect to bring it in now. Above that, when you look at the ship in the trailer, you can see it almost has decals on it, almost like branding, which is one thing we have always had different vehicles. So maybe they're bringing this sort of customization to ships but above that, allow us to do more things than just that. Lord Darth Nintendo. Um, yeah, I do like Starfield. I don't like the story of Starfield all that much. And I was enjoying the exploration of Starfield until I realised that a lot of the random stuff that you find on planets are just copy and pasted from a spawning pool and I was seeing the same thing over and over again. The only thing that did keep me coming back to Starfield and kept me slightly more occupied than I thought it was, was the ship customization. The ship customization in Starfield is, is freaking awesome. I love it. I really, really do love the ship customization inside of Starfield. And I do feel it would be nice if Hello Games added in a type of ship like that that we could build and actually take to planet side, have multiple stations in, have multiple ship crews. A bit like somebody else mentioned earlier on, they would like actual crews. The only thing is, our, our freighters right now in game just don't move anywhere. We need something that's in between the ships that we have now and the freighter some sort of our own like little frigate if you like that we can actually fly through space that is completely customizable that'd be pretty nice the only thing is you know you can't take it inside of the nexus or anything like that but maybe they could add something on the side of the nexus where you could sort of dock your sort of custom ship in and go through a side door into the nexus i mean there's all sorts they could do with that i suppose ways to bring that into game i just don't think they're going to bring in ship customization because of all the ship hunters and also the portal exchanges and things like that unless they do it in a very intelligent way i have made in a couple of videos on ideas on how they could bring in ship customization and not upset ship hunters through scrapping parts on the ships and building your own ships that way i'll put a video up there to the ship customization but the thing that i loved about ship customization inside of starfield is when you have put your ship together you know it auto generates all the sort of interiors and stuff like that and you can actually traverse your ship and walk around your ship if you could do that on our ships inside No Man's Sky, it wouldn't be believable because our ships are not much bigger than us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyways, yeah, it's a great idea. We do need some more customization on stuff than the stuff that we own. I mean, at the moment, we can name our ships. And people can't even see what we've named our bloody ships. Even that would be a step in the right direction. Eric NL. What I'd love to see is coercive, cohesive storytelling. Like it is now, it's pretty vague and fragmented. For newcomers, it's a bit too confusing. Besides that huge patch fixes all bugs before introducing new stuff. Solid, a solid foundation. Have an awesome 2024. Onyava. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. I'm trying to work out that last bit. What the fudge is that? Onyava. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Anyways, I'm going to get stuck on that now. Um, yeah. I would like to have all the lore linked up. There was some summer lore where Ariadne went into the void and went missing and who we have now is a doppelganger. None of the new players to No Man's Sky know this. It's a massive swathe of lore that only people got to see back in like, what, 2021 or something mentals, freaking years ago. I feel that they should put that in as a new story arc. One thing for sure. So yeah, totally in agreement there. Mr. Dear Candy, we need new ships that have interiors in them. We just touched on that, Mr. Dear Candy. Heck yeah, so yes, we're pretty much in alignment there. Insides out, pretty much everything listed on your poll would do for me. Lovely jubbly. Yes, cool you. We've got Moose Chapel here. I'm an explorer and I simply want more variety. I want ice planets to look unique and I want fauna to be new and bizarre. I've tried, I'm tired of seeing deers with six legs and different colours. I actually applied to this one. I said pretty much the same thing. I'd like to see ice sheets and ice caves and all that sort of shenanigans. But yeah, when it comes to the creatures on planets, they did say at GDC 2015 with the art direction by Grant Duncan, that planets will have creatures that make sense to their biomes. So if you are on a cold planet, you're more likely to see creatures with large furry coats. Mm -hmm. Really? I still land on freaking ice planets and I see creatures walking around that look reptilian. Yes, with like they look like amphibious creatures. 
it doesn't feel all that livable, breathable to me. It just feels like copy and paste. And yes, seeing deers with six legs, I have to agree. So yeah, I, I honestly think they need to add in a lot more believability and organicness to these biomes. Since I've gone down the biome route, uh, surely there's more they can do about that. It just doesn't feel believable most of the time. Gary Pazani. Hello there. Hopefully I didn't butcher your name. I'm not very good at pronunciations. The flora and fauna needs big overhauls. Same on every planet. Pretty much still sh and, and still needs ship customization. Personally, half the fun is landing on planets with life, but not 90% of them. Should be more barren, but interesting ones. Not because of how yeah, it is. Sometimes less is more. Also, more base parts, like ground-to-air missiles, when outposts or bases get attacked. Just a thought. Yes, now the bases can get attacked, it'd be nice if we could put in base defences. Totally with you on that one. And I think we've already touched on the whole variety of planets, not making them all that believable. And I kind of, yeah, I kind of agree with you that when they added life on pretty much every planet, they kind of took away from that special element of finding life. But yeah, I used to land on planets, get out my ship, find there was no life, then take off and fly to the next one until I found life. And then when I did find life, I catalogue it and then find that it was quite similar throughout anyway. So I honestly don't know how they go about tackling that one. Their whole system, their whole system of how they build creatures and their, their algorithms to how they believe, make them believable to the plant and biome needs a massive sort of tinkerage. Anyways, moving on from there, we've got Arcane Worm. Hello there, our gang. Everything mentioned in the poll except portable refiner duplication. I don't want that fixed. It really reduces the repetitive grind for me, allowing me more free time to spend just exploring and enjoying stuff I haven't seen yet. I don't want to get frustrated spending dozens and dozens of hours trying to collect a few certain things to reach one tiny little goal. If you want to do that, I'll play GTA. No Man's Sky is supposed to be mainly about exploring the unknown. Just give me more of the unknown to go after and leave me to my own devices and how I choose to do it. Add that to the, ab the ability to actually customise our ships. I love to see complete shipbuilding as an option, but I gladly set up variety or visual upgrade abilities. Colour choices, physical add-on options, different weapons would actually look different when equipped to the ship. Having a few different wings and landing gear configurations to choose from, for example, maybe even being able to apply faction decals to certain ship parts. Just some kind of variety beyond simple waiting and hoping for just the right ship to show up at a trading post or a space station. Yes, I've got a lot to say on this one. Okay, well when it comes to duplication, I duplicate things myself to save the grind, but I feel what they should do is, you know you've got the Atlas Pass level 1, level 2 and level 3. Maybe when you go inside of the back rooms inside of stations and you use those freaking Atlas Passes to unlock that room, perhaps inside that room there could be a duplicator machine that you can only use once you've got your Atlas Pass level 3 card. And until then, if you've only got your Atlas Pass 2 or 1, perhaps it still lets you duplicate, but the cost for it is a lot higher. But I think going in there and having your Atlas Pass level 3, and you put in a couple of nanites, I'm not talking a massive amount, and you can just duplicate what the fudge you like, and so it gets rid of that grind. I think having the grind all the way up to a point, once you've got your Atlas Pass level 3, would make perfect freaking sense. I made a video on a personal duplication machine. Think of um, Star Trek, you've got the replicators. In fact, I think I called it a replicator. And you use nanites. Nanites are like um, programmable weirdness anyway, aren't they? We've got nanotechnology use that to transmute something into something else or to get something and duplicate it make clones of it as much as you like and you just pump in a few nanites you know i think that could work very well it still gives you a legit way a legit way to do duplication inside of game and if they brought it inside a game as a canon actual recognized method of duplication then remove all the duplication glitches because at the end of the day duplication glitches are bugs so Get rid of it, but add in a way to do actual replication. 
with a replicating machine. I've got a video on the replicating machine. I'll put it up there. Go hit it up if that sounds sneaky and awesome to you. But yeah, I use I use duplication methods because, like you, I would rather just be out there exploring. And the whole grind of stuff. It, it's like to unlock a freaking portal. Come on! Seriously! Having to drag sodium and cobalt. It's fun the first time you do it, okay? The, the hundredth time you've done it, you're like, oh my fudging heck, this is... I, I put it in creative mode so I can just click on them once. Dun, 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 and unlock the portal. If you've got an Atlas card level 2, say, you should be able to plug that into the centre. Boom! Unlocks a whole lot. Or, if you've only got Atlas Pass level 1, you put it in, and you have to put in half the amount of resources. That would be better, you know? If you've got Atlas Pass level 2 or 3, bang, unlocks your portal, boom, away you go, you know? And then Atlas Passes start making actual freaking sense, yeah. Anyway, and we've already touched on um, the whole ship customization thing. Hopefully you're going to hit up that video that I put up earlier. Lovely jubbly! Let's uh, scroll on down. We've got Liam Jonas Scale. Hello there. Same thing I've wanted back since when they took it out of the game. Round wall base parts. Oh, okay. Um, I've seen people that have got round wall base parts inside of their base build list. I haven't got them in mine. I've never actually used round wall base parts myself. I haven't seen them or got to use them. But yeah, that would be nice if they did add them in. Michael Bigot. I would like more polish and better end game loop, but more polish most. Nothing spoils a game than bugs. I kind of agree with that, Mr. Michael. Heck yes, there's still quite a lot of weird, um, odd bugs inside of the game. There really are. Yeah. Okay. James MC, I think with the new game now, in the public eye, all hands are on deck. How much they can dedicate to the old project, unless it's a test arena for the new game? Yeah. There could be an element of that, but I would say, James, until they actually launch their new game, the only thing that's sort of bringing them in their bread and butter and actually paying their wages is No Man's Sky and the games that they've got out there available now. So I honestly think that they still need to do things to raise the hype and say, oh my god, you've got to see what Hello Games have just added into No Man's Sky. And people jumping over to buy No Man's Sky. It's just how many more people can they convince to buy No Man's Sky? Yeah, so I honestly think if they are going to add more stuff into No Man's Sky, it is going to be quirky, odd stuff to bring new players in. You know, like companions. You know, there's a lot of people out there that might just want to go out there and collect pets, alien pets from around the world. And that probably brought in a whole new player base. So if they did add in something like ship customization, that could do it, you know. Chow Lin just says Origins 2. Yeah, there's a couple of new biomes, a load of new fauna, flora loads of variety to the nines the funny thing is when they actually put out origins they said that this is sort of going back to roots going back to the origins and we want to do a lot of this in our updates and they haven't overly have they no okay cool andy says i feel there may be another base reset okay andy well that's a pretty terrifying feeling i don't know whether they would do that unless they could actually add in a way for people to favorite their bases and maybe restore them the last time they did a base reset they let you restore the last base you had made but most people only had maybe one to three bases back then i believe anyway now people have hundreds of bases i think that could cause a massive upset unless there was a way to restore your bases from base computers or something Anyway, Mr. Snuggle Gus, hello there. It was an interesting at first, but the concept of limited timed content kind of sucks. I want to play them on my schedule, and a lot of the time when I could put in some time in, there is nothing going on. Add on top of the cherry that a lot of the lore in those events is so anyone who has recently brought the game gets a story in broken bits. Honestly, the game just needs a good dose of Doism, dudism. It needs a rug to bring everything together. Yeah, all right, Snuggle Curse, I see where you're coming from there. Yeah, because if you have jumped in, you're picking up some of the actual later lore that's related to all of the lovely autophages, but you haven't unlocked the autophages, you're either going to get mass spoilers, or you're going to be like, what the fudge is this all about? Yeah, I kind of see what you're saying there. They might be a way that they could stitch the expeditions into the game as part of the game. 
you know, so after you've done the Artemis quest line, maybe it unlocks a, one of the expeditions, like, you know, cartographers or something. There could be a way that they do that and maybe bring it in some, we actually bring in one of the NPCs at the time into the actual anomaly. You get the anomaly, it's just full of a load of strangers. It'd be nice if they actually tied each of the expeditions to each of these NPCs and we go and rescue them. You do the expedition at the end, you rescue one of these NPCs. I don't know. And then when you slowly populate out the, uh, populate out the actual um, Nexus. Maybe they could do something clever along those lines. I don't know. But yeah, some way of knitting it all together, that would be my rug, is actually give each of the NPCs inside of the Nexus a backstory and tie each of those NPCs to maybe an expedition and bring the expeditions in as story elements into the game. Yeah, that could work. Anyway, cool, yeah? Sorry people, I'm really struggling to read all these out, as you can tell my voice is really coarse. Anyway, how many more have I got to go? I've got a fair more to go, to be fair. Oh my days. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop reading these points, because I'm fairly sure that we've probably covered a lot of this further up inside of all this anyway. But I'm going to scroll through the remainder and leave them on screen for a little while so you guys can actually read them, so you can see everybody else's comments that they've chimed in. Oh, there's one by Good at Game there. Can we get all of these? I do like Good at Game. He's got an awesome channel. Go check out Good at Game. It's freaking great. Here you go. Look, I can click him. Oh, hold on. Let's hold control and click him on another tab. Yeah, so if you haven't subscribed to Good at Game, good little channel, Good at Game. Does a lot of No Man's Sky stuff, does a lot of other bits and bobs too. I'm fairly sure you're going to like what he gets up to. He's got Skyrim on there, he's got a bit of Starfield. And he's got a great personality as well. I've subscribed, he's good. Anyway, hit him up, he's good. Right, anyhow, but there we are, let's carry on scrolling down a bit. So there we are, hopefully you've read all of those ones up there. Cities, we need cities. Hmm. I think... Because Nintendo Switch can't even manage settlements, which are like villages, let's face it. They're nowhere even close to a city. They're, are they a town? Maybe when they're fully done, if you want to call them a town. But they, they can't cope with that, so I don't think cities are going to come in. Um, I think Switch has sort of stifled anything like that. Unless they just say, well, Switch aren't going to have cities, just like they don't have settlements. Then hopefully, yeah, they could add in home, home worlds and cities. That could be kind of nice. There was a time, you know, you know when you first interact with the first space leviathan that you come across? One of those giant organic frigates. When you encounter that for the first time, it goes through a load of things. But there's three questions there where it asks about visiting mega cities, bustling metropolises, I think it actually says, or idiom-veined mountains, which I think could be related to resources and how you get your resources, or mega faunas on planets. Three things. I honestly think Hello Games has put that inside of the game as an in-game freaking survey on things to deliver in just to see what the player base really want the most out of all of those mega cities better resources or mega fauna i chose mega fauna but i'd imagine equally people chose giant cities mm. well, yeah i'm just gonna keep scrolling down and just stop on any that uh, might might not let's just do this last one down here Mr. Rio. Okay, my wish list be turn on the procedural generation, plants, flora, fauna, craziness, level higher. The game has its reputation back, so if there are planets too brutal, it'll be for now a feature and not a bug. Bug fixes, including the memory leak, remove the comms balls, the ability to type in coordinates in a planet that generates a waypoint, simple search bar, and go. Yeah. It's, it's an oddity that because sometimes when you visit like little outposts and stuff you can it actually appears in your waypoints like area on your discoveries page but you then can't click back on that waypoint to set a quick waypoint back there there's a lot of little things like that that they could improve but I do like your simple search bar 
and maybe it also generates a little waypoint there for you to go to, some sort of beacon. But it'd be nice if you had a cinematic mode. You know, like in Red Dead Redemption, where you get a cinematic mode. You set where you want to go to on a map, your horse just sort of gallops along, you go into cinematic mode, it sort of spins around, you get to see what's going on. That'd be freaking excellent, especially for content creators. If you could just set in cinematic camera mode and it swaps to outside your ship as you're flying and goes to your back, that'd be freaking great! Yeah, I kind of love that idea. I, I, I've stapled it onto the top of your idea, but yeah, yeah. I would love the ability to filter off comms balls and bases during expeditions. Both of those things kind of take away from the expedition experience for me, you know? Maybe I might turn on the actual bases and run it a second time afterwards and use those bases to complete it a bit quicker, but I would much rather have it so I can actually lock on to where I want to lock on. The amount of times that I want to go to a rendezvous point, and I'm going towards a rendezvous point, then I realise, no, actually it's locked onto a comms board, or it's locked onto a freaking base, and I go miles away from it. Yeah, annoying. But yeah, we've reached the bottom of the ideas list. Thank you very much, people in the view of us, for all of your ideas. Okay, now a lot of those ideas echo my own sentiments into what I would like to see inside of game. Other things that I would like to see inside of the actual game, though, is Hello Games has given us the options inside of here to change all sorts of lovely stuff. Yeah, there's, there's all sorts of toggles that we can change inside of here. We can even have our own custom game mode when you go under difficulty now. You've got all these lovely toggles inside of here. I'd like to see Hello Games introduce something a little bit like our bike beat system. You know, like how you can make music and then you can go over to somebody. You can go onto your quick menu, go into your bike beat, wherever your bike beat is. Here we go. Here it is bite beat library and I can send music to anybody that's in close proximity I would like it where we could go into say the options go into a new option inside of here game toggles or something you go into there and it's a bit like this one but you, this area would be like starting area so you could choose the starting planet do you want it to be extreme do you want it to be hard do you want it to be normal or do you want it to be easy as a planet type for somebody to spawn on okay the ship do you want them to have a starting ship or do they have to find a ship or purchase a ship you know, or salvage a ship you know that sort of stuff um so you've got all these different starting toggles what multi-tool do they start with exotic do they start with a pistol do they start with a rifle do they start with an alien multi-tool so you choose everything that they start with yeah? And then it goes into the main game mechanics. So can they land in space stations? Can they only land in pirate space stations? Can they not land in those stations? Can they summon the actual Nexus? At what point can they summon the Nexus? You know, that sort of stuff. And then the actual goal settings towards the end. You know, like, um, what have they done to complete this game mode? Have they S-classed their spaceship? Have they reached the galactic core? Have they S-classed their multi-tool? Um, yeah, all sorts that they could add in there. They could be also... Uh, have they built a base over a certain threshold? Have they taken out a, a certain amount of pirate dreadnoughts? Have they taken out a freighter? Have they destroyed so many sentinel pillars? You know, all that sort of stuff. I mean, so you've got like start, middle and end. And I hope they add in a shed load to the middle. I know I only mentioned a couple, but there could be all sorts in there. Sentinels are always angry. Pirates are always aggroed as well. You know, you could turn on all sorts of stuff to make the game sort of how you want. What I'm thinking is in between updates, people are looking for stuff to do. And I know that Jason plays, Beeble, Survival Bob and Zane, they all do like the survivor run. Yeah, then you have to go onto a Discord and you have to remember every single freaking thing. My memory is like a bloody sieve. I would love to take part in that, but I know that I would forget something. And I wouldn't realise, I'd get all the way to the end and be like, Ha ha, I have done it! Aren't I awesome? And then somebody would say, no, in episode freaking two, you went and flew into a pirate station. You're not allowed to do that, Captain Steve. Well, if we had this game mode toggle thing that I'm on about, I could just hit on up freaking Beeble or Zane or Jason or whoever and say can you send me that file I just join their game they send me it 
you go to the back of the actual Nexus, you know inside of the Nexus where we've put frickin's Artemis or whatever, we know that it runs different simulations. So you run over to that machine all the way over here, I should have got a bit closer to it, shouldn't I, during the frickin' videos. You know what, I can stop recording and just re- So over here, you know where Mercury is, and you've got this frickin' giant portal there. Over in the back end of here, there is a story inside of No Man's Sky where you have to use this machine. And we know that it launches new simulations. So maybe you come here, you hit this up, and it says here, do you want to load in a new game simulation? You hit yes, and what it does, it takes you back out to the main screen, lets you create a new save point, and you start in with all of those game options as a toggle. You just choose the name of the actual thing. So in Jason's case, it would probably be the survivor game, you know? Yeah. So there you go, you just have load up iteration. You hit load iteration, and it brings up almost like your bike beat sort of screeny thing, you know, all of this sort of stuff. You choose the one that you want. Oh, I, I want Jason's survivor run. Hit that, and then boom. Dundally and done. It chucks you out to the main screen, you hit up a new save, it spawns you in. It's like the actual starting one as well. It'd be nice if they was start on a freighter, start on a planet, start in a space station. And what type of ship do you want to start with? Do you want to start with a solar ship? Do you want to start with a sentinelized ship? All that sort of shenanigans. They could add all of that in there and they give us the actual options to make our own game sort of quests, if you like separate to the other thing. It'd be nice if there was also award toggles. So if you have run all the expeditions and you've got some of the in-game pets, like the monstrosity pet or the sentinel dog or whatever, you could add in a couple of those as a reward thing at the end, or maybe three. Add in three things for whoever manages to complete it from all of your Quicksilver restored items that you've managed to get throughout your whole time of playing No Man's Sky. So what do I mean by reward list? So if you go over to see Johnny Five, if I go to collect expedition rewards, these are all of my expedition rewards in here. So, you know, I could maybe add in the Normandy or I could add in the construct egg for this little guy. I mean, I've got all sorts that I could add in as reward perks for anybody that chooses to accept my mission and run it. And, you know, and when you actually look at the mission, maybe it shows you the free rewards and it shows you a little mini synopsis, a summary of what you're going to have to do and roughly how long it takes to actually do this actual mission objective. I think that would work frickin' swimmingly well and it would keep players coming back, keep them energised, keep them sort of occupied and keep them sort of doing stuff inside a game. And not only that, every expedition that comes out, people would want to run them to give better rewards for running their mission that they've set out. Something else that I feel that could come into game is right now we've got this weird construct that we've built that just sits up here and does frickin' nutting right now. I think that this would be quite good to be introduced as some sort of daily, weekly, monthly raid objective. We talk to the Autophage, he sets us a mission to go into the Realm of Glass or the Void, whichever they prefer, and you get a certain amount of time in there a day, maybe like 16 minutes per session, 16, 16, 16. Maybe you can do it three times a day for 16 set minute sessions each. Maybe when you're in there though, there's a way to slow down that timer while you're in there. The more you destroy when it comes to echoes and glass or something, maybe the time goes up so you can buy yourself some more time if you need it. But the idea is you go in there and it's to salvage maybe echo seeds and bring them back to this guy to unlock some sort of reward on a daily, weekly, monthly and maybe seasonal basis that then unlocks you something pretty groovy. Perhaps then the things that you unlock in this you could also use as being end sort of rewards for your own sort of custom missions that we set that we can share to people. I think this year, 2024, for Hello Games, if they are going to want to leave No Man's Sky at some point to go over to Light No Fire, they need to give more to the players and more to the community and more control to make player-driven content. That's where I see the life of No Man's Sky, other than modding. I think modding was pr is probably going to take off a PC, but it's not going to filter down to us console players, and No Man's Sky could become some sort of cult classic when it comes to the modding community if they don't add in some of this player-driven sort of content. I think for No Man's Sky to have a big year in 2024, they need to start handing the reins over to the community, to the players a little bit more. Player-driven community missions and some sort of daily, weekly, monthly raid system using this chap, I think, would be the best way for Hello Games to make this a big year for No Man's Sky. If they don't do it in 2024, 2025, 
then yeah, I think they've missed a massive trick on this one. And I really liked a lot of the ideas that you guys have had out there inside of the viewerverse. And yeah, I would like all that sort of stuff to happen alongside all of this. Am I being greedy? Perhaps, maybe, but I just want No Man's Sky to be the best game it can be and the best experience for anybody picking this game up, I really do. And I am hoping that they bring multiplayer to Switch, even if it's local LAN play with two people in the same room with Switches and connecting them together somehow. I don't know. But you know, if, if they can play multi if they can play multiplayer in Minecraft and stuff like that on the Switch and Fortnite, then surely they can do it for No Man's and sky is where I'm going with this anyway people I think that's pretty much everything that I have to say on what I think would make No Man's Sky a big year inside of 2024 I had to think what year it was for a second now people I nearly fluffed up I nearly said three but there we are people that's everything for you and thank you very much for everybody that chimed off with comments and suggestions and, and actually hit up that poll very lovely heck yes and sorry if I didn't read out yours but yeah my voice is, is pretty terrible I'm going to go and get myself another Lemsip I did have a Lemsip on the go it's gone now yes I need another one yeah, <laughs> poorly me. Anyway, until next time, people. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.